Next question is from Emily Powell 79. I'm stuck at a 225 pound conventional deadlift and want to get to 240. What do I need to do to progress? All right. So this is, it's hard to answer questions like this because it depends on who I'm yeah, talking to. Sort of the back history too. Yeah. Like I don't know what your workout routine looks like or your technique or where the weak links are. So this is going to be kind of general advice. With some exercises, there are other exercises that have such a huge carryover that sometimes when you're stuck at one exercise, you've plateaued. What you should do is focus on these other exercises that contribute, and then you'll see this carryover. So a good example would be uh, overhead press to a bench press. Oftentimes, people get stuck on the bench press, and they do all these different things. They plateau, and then I, you know, I would tell them, all right, let's get you stronger in your overhead press. They start practicing and getting better at the overhead press. Boom, their bench press goes up. Squatting really makes the deadlift go up for a lot of people. It does mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. If my squat goes up, my deadlift almost always goes up. It's not always true the other way around. If my deadlift goes up, my squat doesn't necessarily go up. I feel like a hip thrust would contribute a hip, lot to that too. Hip thrust is the yeah. other one. I was just going to say that. So yeah. squats and hip thrust. So if you've been deadlifting for a long time and you've gotten good at it, and you know Emily sounds like a, a, a female name, 225 is pretty damn good deadlift for a woman. So it's pretty good. Sounds like you've been working at it for a while. Maybe just kind of maintain your deadlift. And then try to place your focus on squatting and hip thrusting and then see if you end up getting that carryover. Yeah, I've also found value in like using a trap bar deadlift uh, as opposed to that for a nice contrast to shift my efforts on that because it's a bit different uh, recruiting yeah. uh, pattern for that. And, and also, but yeah, I mean, it, kind of transitioning to another uh, exercise that has just as much value that might strengthen certain parts of the lift you might be weak in. So something that helped me um, before, I mean, it, uh, up until I was 30 years old, I had never done this. So obviously the novelty played in a role. So if you do this already, maybe this isn't a good advice. Um, but if you've never done this, this helped me a lot, um, which was I never trained singles, doubles or triples until you guys yeah, yeah. ever in my life. Never in my life did I go pick a I wasn't a big a max out guy. I used to like joke about that all the yeah. time. You know that I used to say it doesn't matter how much I can lift, you know, if I look this way, like that's all I care about. So I never I never did anything under five reps. And even when I did five reps, it was rare. It was just to interrupt my mm -hmm. other training and then go back to like kind of hypertrophy training. So, um, and I found in, in a lot of females I've trained, not a lot of females tend to lift really heavy. A lot of girls are good about not giving a shit about their PR in the gym and not chasing that. And they, a lot of them don't do, this was Katrina, doesn't do singles, doubles, or triples. So one of the ways I got her deadlift up and my deadlift up was training that, just training in that lower rep yeah, range. Yeah, five sets of two reps. Because there is, there is a big difference, for at least for me, lifting the weight five times versus when I'm going to, when I'm learning, because there's a lot with a deadlift on how you get yourself positioned, how well you're primed, and how you can generate all that force for mm -hmm. one or two or three reps versus lifting it five or eight or ten times. Like oh, it's yeah. a it's a it's a different strategy and strength that you need for those rep ranges. So if you're somebody who's lo really looking to, uh, I've never PR'd over 225 and I want to see 240, but you've also never trained you know, like in your routine a day where you are doing singles. And when you do that, by the way, you're not trying to max out every time no, you do it no, no. but you're what you're really working on is that that explosiveness for one rep and getting better at that and you will improve you'll get better at if Just you've never trained that, that capacity for more force production that's right what that provides which is great another thing that if i'm getting stuck especially a sticking point for me if i'm it's from you know the bottom of the lift where you know it's the pull i like to do deficit deadlifts and kind of focus on that for a bit just to really emphasize and, and put, uh, you know, more resistance there uh, for me to overcome so I can, again, but this is really just addressing summoning more force. And so it sort of focuses that uh, attention in that part of the lift, uh, which if you kind of segment out parts of the lift where you feel like the, the weak link is for you, if you can identify that, you know, that might be a good strategy. Yeah. You could also try resistance bands on the bar. Like let's say your workout normally is, I don't know, 200 pounds, maybe go down to 150, get some pretty sturdy resistance bands, attach them to the end of the bar and anchor them with something. And now you've got this variable resistance where it gets heavier at the top. That often will get someone out of a plateau. You'll see a five or 10 pound gain just from doing that. But I think ultimately what we're all saying is a change in your programming mm -hmm. somehow, change of focus or reps or the way that the resistance is being applied, 
change it. And, and this may mean that for two months you do something completely different and go back to it. But if you do what you've been doing, obviously, uh, it's probably not going to go anywhere. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.